Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Rocket Cairo podcast, the business and marketing podcast for people centered chiropractors. Uh, my name is Jerry, I'm your host, and we're going to talk today um, about the idea that sex sells and what does that actually mean to chiropractors or um, is it even applicable to chiropractors? You know, we've all heard this statement before, and I'm not at all. Let me just kind of start off by saying I'm not encouraging chiropractors to use sex to kind of sell their services or to get attention. Uh, but it is something that a lot of chiropractors are doing or trying. And I thought it might be interesting just to unpack this a little bit because I don't think it's quite as linear of a benefit as what a lot of people would assume. And this came from the fact that, um, so I, I, I've been looking at a few chiropractors stuff online, maybe more so than what I have historically done. And I posted a, uh, an image. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you'll see the video it's up here or the, the picture it's up here on the screen. And it said, uh, I, I posted a, just a statement and it says, after studying the most popular chiropractors online, I've concluded that people don't care about chiropractic. In fact, I've concluded that a long time ago. The rest of it is this. However, they do seem to care a lot about loud cracks and half-dressed women. <laughs> and so it's funny that, I mean, maybe it's not funny, maybe it's sad that the most popular chiropractors online fall into one of these two categories, if not both of these two categories, where they're just selling the crack, you know, the reactions, people... Uh, people seem to like watching people get adjusted for the first time and kind of have that like, oh, oh my gosh. And people seem to really like that, the loud crack and the loud pop. So you see a lot of that stuff online. I talked about the ring dinger a couple weeks ago, like that sort of thing. Um, then there's chiropractors and, and these are the ones that really bother me more, like that are more disturbing. And I'm not going to show the video because I just don't want to show it on the podcast. But um, there was someone that I saw the other day that it was a guy who had somebody, uh, a video of somebody that was, he was introducing to his Instagram account and was saying, and he tagged this person and said, this person came in and got her first adjustment. Now, the first thing I noticed is like, this person's wearing like, like skin tight pants um, and, and like a, like a workout top sort of situation. And so that was kind of the obvious thing. And that was what was on the thumbnail. So I started watching a little bit of it and I thought to myself, I don't know, maybe this person is a singer or, or some sort of person from a, a movie. Like, I don't know why they would be introducing this person or bragging about this person being in their office. And so since the person was tagged on Instagram, I clicked on the, the, uh, the tag to see who this person was. And it's just one of these, like, it's one of these influencers, like influencers, and all it is is a girl that takes her clothes off for Instagram. I mean, that's what it is. And she had a decent number of following. I'm assuming that she's in the chiropractor's local area. And I've heard about chiropractors who are actually doing this. And I actually know that there are companies out there who are uh, selling programs to chiropractors, telling them how to do this. And the idea is like influencer marketing. And I'll give you the gist of it. The gist of it is that you find these people in your local area who have certain, you know, higher followings on Instagram and you get them into your office in exchange for them reviewing your office, doing a video in your office, posting that, uh, you know, on their Instagram account and your Instagram account. And the idea is it's, it's kind of like cross marketing or cross networking from an Instagram influencer standpoint. So that's the gist of it. The issue you'll run into if you want to do something like this is the most popular people on Instagram. Well, first of all, you have to deal with people only that are in your area, but also the most popular people on Instagram are people that are showing their butts. And so that's kind of the, the you have to be willing to be that person. This chiropractor was clearly willing to be that person. And it was as soon as I kind of saw who this person is like, oh, okay, I get it. Like this is a sex sell thing. And so even when I posted this image, I had people comment on it saying like, you know, this sex sells. And I think that the, that they think a lot of people think that that's very you, you, like linear. If I just put, uh, usually women more so than men. So if I just put a woman that's not clothed very much or half naked or whatever, and I'm very sexual in my advertising and my Instagram and whatever, that's going to equal me selling more of whatever particular product or service that I have to offer. And it actually isn't quite that linear. So I thought it might be interesting to unpack it because I think there's just assumptions around that. 
once again, I'm not encouraging you to do this because I don't think it's a great idea. I don't think it's very professional. You know, that's my opinion for whatever that's worth. Um, also, the other thing I'm going to show you is this. So this is really just a treat for those that are on the YouTube channel. <laughs> So this was a video that was posted in a Facebook group that I'm in. Uh, I'll give a shout out to the Forward Thinking Chiropractic Alliance. This is Bobby Maybe's group. Um, if you're more on the evidence side of things and you want a, a good group in, on Facebook, I think they're a really great group. Uh, someone posted this. It's just a video of someone. This this guy is getting one of these Y strap adjustments, and I don't know why he has a mask on his face, like his mouth. You can see his mouth. He's got a big beard. He's got a mask over his nose and his eye, and it's it's kind of a weird starting point. I'm gonna hit play on here, uh, but what ends up happening is this guy is on the Y using this Y strap and he pulls to get that big kind of loud crack pop thing. Um, <laughs> this patient and he pulls the guys, the, the Y strap comes off and he pulls the guy's hat off. And there's this moment of like, what in the world? And the chiropractor almost falls over. So it's kind of a chiropractic fail video. Now there's a couple things about this that make me laugh. One is I'm not a fan of the Y strap. I think that it's just a gross manipulation of the spine that is probably more dangerous than it is beneficial. I'm a less is more guy. You guys know I do. I did upper cervical, so I, I'm definitely a more specific less is more type of person. So this this goes against my normal way of thinking about how what is best for a patient. But I did make a comment that I want to share that that kind of had me win the Internet uh, on this this video is my comment was we're assuming because they were making comments about the chiropractor and how bad of a job he, job he did and whatever. My comment was we're assuming he's trying to adjust this guy's spine. What if the guy on the table has been trying to get that hat off for a week with no success? In that case, the chiropractor is a hero. <laughs> <laughs> I also made a decapitating joke, which is like my dad comment. Um, but that really wasn't the best comment. That was my secondary comment. I couldn't help myself. Popped a dad joke there. Uh, so I thought we'll throw that in there because we're talking about cracks, right? We're talking about cracks and then half dressed women with the with the initial meme. So let me show you this. This is an article that was um uh, business daily news or business news daily. I said that wrong. Uh, February 24th, 2020. So they're talking about sex and advertising. And this is the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand about like sex and advertising. So the idea of sexualizing something for the purpose of selling products and service is this has been happening for a very long time. And the fact that it's happening more now is actually less to do with, uh, different companies adopting that philosophy of sex sales. And it's more to, it has more to do with the companies that were already doing it. More of those types of companies are doing it and they're just going harder. Like they're just going like deep diving into it. There are companies that uh, aren't traditionally sexualized that are now have kind of jumped in. I would say chiropractors fall into that category. Like if a chiropractor is using sexual stuff to advertise, or to grow their audience or whatever. That's obviously not a traditional uh, advertising that would, would do something that way, nor should it be. Uh, Hardee's is another example. Years ago, uh, Hardee's really became known for sexualizing their commercials. It was like the thick burgers, and they always had women like eating burgers in very seductive ways. And I mean, it's just downright like soft porn type stuff. Like you can't even you you can't even watch it around your kids or something because I mean frankly adults shouldn't be watching it either, uh, but it's just one of those things that's like well this is selling burgers this this doesn't really make sense traditionally the stuff that actually when when sex sells the stuff that sex sells the best is actually the the things that are either impulse type buys or things that are related to image so for instance um, alcohol uh, beauty products. Uh, health and hygiene, things that have to do like Axe body spray. Okay, that makes sense because you're taught your the whole idea behind that is I'm going to smell good so people want me. Um, makeup products, uh, anything that has to do with diet, anything like that. Well, that that makes sense. Things like alcohol, that makes sense. Uh, uh, drugs and medicine, like drug drug. Uh, companies some kind of do that a little bit not a lot they're they're more kind of happy lovey worldy type of stuff clothing 
travel. Um, they have kind of a list here, entertainment. Those are the ones that seem to fit that category a little bit more. Um, the, this article had pointed out that uh, it's not, sex isn't very effective in selling things like high risk inf informational products, such as banking services, appliances. They mentioned utility trucks. Um, so things that are just really far distance away from that, it doesn't seem to help that much. And that and got me thinking about chiropractic and I'm going, well, chiropractic really doesn't, although it falls into the health category, it doesn't really fall into the category of like a health and beauty type of a product. And so I thought to myself, like, does sex really sell chiropractic? And I think as a general rule, the answer would probably be no, because I don't think that it's so closely connected to those things that traditionally work well with like, you know, when I put this, this woman or sexualized advertising in an alcohol campaign that works better. When I put, you know, this sexually charged thing in my beauty products or my, my hygiene products or my dietary commercials or whatever, those seem to work better. Or obviously if you're selling some sort of sex related item or product or whatever, that makes a lot of sense because there's a connection there. But then when you go into chiropractic, you know, chiropractic isn't or at least shouldn't be sexualized. It's not something that falls into those categories. And if we look at, we really start deep diving into this, there isn't a huge connection there. And so what is the benefit to chiropractors? And I think that there's probably two benefits. One benefits everyone and two, the other one only benefits a certain type of chiropractor. Number one is this, is I do think where it actually helps chiropractors is attention. And this is something that was mentioned with the Hardee's thing and, and Hardee's and Carl's Jr., whichever kind of part of the country you're in, they actually stopped. This was back in 2017. Um, they stopped doing the raunchy commercials and stuff like that because um, even they noticed that what they claim is those commercials saved their company. So their company was struggling. They were, they were potentially going under, lay a bunch of people off. They started running these very uh, raunchy sexualized commercials. And the attention that it got ultimately helped their business and helped their company stay afloat. And I think that that's probably the benefit that if a chiropractor is going to kind of be overtly sexual or kind of suggestively sexual in their advertising and in their social media, the one thing that it will get you is attention. But if you're falling into the category of like, I want this to actually grow my practice, I think you're probably going to run into the same issues that like the Carl's Jr. thing did is, is eventually you get to the point where you're like, okay, that attention gives you the opportunity to grow your business and, and any attention gives you the opportunity to grow a business. But if you don't take that opportunity and turn it into something, if there's no substance behind it, you're going to have a problem. And even they, as, as long as they kind of rode that momentum, they got to the point where they said, we're not going to do this anymore. It's just not working anymore. It's just starting to fall flat. And that's because sooner or later you run into this point where you're saying, well, the, the I'm advertising, I'm really advertising women. I'm not advertising burgers. And same thing with a chiropractor. I'm advertising women. I'm not advertising chiropractic. And eventually that will tail off. So if someone wanted to get the attention from it and that was kind of what they were shooting for, you can do it that way. But you, you, they're better. There has to be something more to your practice or you're going to fall flat. So attention is one thing that benefits. The other thing is this, and this doesn't apply to guys. So guys were kind of out on this one, is that if you happen to be a woman that's attractive, that actually can affect your business more directly. And I'm not trying to get into like, I don't want it to sound sexual or sexist or something like that. But the truth is, is that if you're a dude and you have like, you know, girls and stuff on your Instagram, whatever, that'll get you attention online. And maybe that turns into patience. I don't know. But if you're actually an attractive woman and you're doing the Instagram thing where, and I've seen this with chiropractors where they're scantily clad or wearing tight clothes or showing pictures of themselves in bikinis and stuff like that. And I get it. I totally understand what you're doing. That's the easiest way to get attention in general for a hot chick. So if you're doing that as a, as a woman, it's entirely possible that that can have a more direct effect on your practice. Now, I don't think you should do it. I think it's demeaning to yourself, and I frankly think it's kind of demeaning to the profession. But if someone's going to benefit long-term or longer-term 
from being kind of the whole sex sell things, it's going to be female chiropractors. It's going to be attractive female chiropractors. They're the ones that if you want to be that person, if you're going to sell your soul and that's what you want to do, you can ride that wave for a very long time. Um, and I actually have an example of this and I'm not going to use the woman's real name. This is actually long before the internet thing was popular and the Instagram stuff was popular. Uh, my ex-wife used to work for a, a chiropractor that had posed in Playboy and she used to tell me like when I was in practice, um, and I'm not, let's say the chiropractor's name is Dr. Mary. It's not her name, but let's just say her name's Dr. Mary. And so my, my ex-wife and I, like when I was in practice, you know, we were married and she would sometimes like say, Oh, well, Dr. Mary used to do this. And Dr. Mary used to do that kind of giving me some thoughts or insights about the way that we were doing things. My thought was always, Dr. Mary was in Playboy and Dr. Mary has a practice full of dudes. I don't think her business skill is why she had a successful practice. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure that had little to do with it. Now I'm not saying she's not a good adjuster and she's not smart, but I'm not Dr. Mary and I don't have that to my advantage. So if we're going to say sex sells, is it that direct for chiropractors? If you're a dude, no, it's not. If you're a woman, maybe. If you're an attractive woman and you're kind of willing to sell your soul. I don't think it's good for the profession. I just don't. Honestly, I don't think it's good for people, human beings. I don't think we should objectify human beings. Like, I don't think that, and it's usually women more so than men. You know, we, our whole society objectifies women. Like, we, we act like, we're trying to empower women and that we're trying to do all these things. We're really not. We objectify women all the time and it's not good. It's not a good thing at all. And so, you know, should our profession be doing that? No, I don't think so. And if you're tempted to do that, I would encourage you not to, I would encourage you to really look into business messaging and marketing. I would encourage you to really look into what your skills are and what is your unique selling point. And it does, it, doesn't have to be sex. It shouldn't have to be sex. You should, you should be better than that. You can be better than that. You could set yourself apart in your community in a way that is long-term, that is professional, that is highlighting the parts of you that are amazing and the parts of you that are unique and the part of your business that is incredible and awesome. And, and the stuff that is not objectifying yourself or other people. So does it sell? Yeah. In certain cases, should chiropractors do it? No, I don't think they should, but that's just my two cents. Take it for whatever it's worth. All right, guys, I'm done. I'm out of here. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. If you want help growing your practice, go to rocketchiro.com. Check out Next Step. Check out the different services that I can help you with, with your local SEO, your website, et cetera, et cetera. If you have any questions, reach out to me and ask. I'll be happy to answer them. I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm going to wrap this up. I'll talk to you later. See ya.